Jesus. I choose to invest my worship, my faith, and my life into Him. (laughs) Because of who He is. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the ending, the God which was, which is, which is to come. The Almighty. The investment of who I am is not into Buddha, Allah, any false pretense out there. My investment of who I am is into Jesus Christ, the one true living God who is righteous and holy and mighty. Praise God. I feel like I've made a good investment. How about you? I've made a very wise investment to align myself with the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the peace speaker, the way maker. Hallelujah. Praise God. feels good to be in His presence, kind of just absolutely in awe of Him at this moment. What I feel and the things we've sung and declared through praise and through song today, prayers that we've prayed. I just stand here. <laughs> we come here week after week. We've been doing this. I've been, I've been, I've been doing this all my life, and most of you have too. A lot of you have too. But it's just as a fresh new experience that I'm in awe of every single time. And that's the beauty of the Lord. Amen. He's a river of living water. He's a fresh well every single time. He's hot bread every time we come into his presence. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Just lift your hands just another moment. Thank him for the refreshing you feel in his spirit right now that he has provided us. Oh, he knew we needed to come into this place and have our souls watered and fed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, I praise you. Amen. Thank you, praise and worship team, for leading us to this place. Thank you, worshipers. Thank you to all of our guests who have added a dimension to this place today. We appreciate you. This place is better because you're here, and we're thankful for you. We're praying for those that are not here this morning for whatever reason. The Lord will be with them. We're incomplete without them. Amen. I don't want to rest until we're all gathered together in a great place of corporate faith. Amen. You can be seated for just a moment. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to read a couple of scriptures and you, you can remain seated up. I plan on being brief today, but you know what they say about the best laid plans. Times it doesn't work out that way. Somebody say, bless him, Lord. First Chronicles 28 and verse number 9. It says this, and thou Solomon, my son. This is David speaking. This is at a, a time of transition. This is where David is near death and he has mustered strength. The Bible says to stand on his feet and to speak with one last breath of authority, vision casting, ordering of the kingdom that he has reigned over for 40 years, four decades of David being their king and the great accomplishments that he brought to Israel. And now he's, he's about to pass that mantle to his son Solomon and God strengthens him one more time to say words that Only David could say with the authority and the anointing that David had proven through all of his poems and all of his songs and all of his battles that he was able to put together here. 
And at this time of transition, he's giving a directive in this couple of scriptures here, passage that we're reading to his son Solomon, who's going to now lead Israel for the next few decades. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Take heed now, for the Lord hath chosen thee to build an house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. Be strong and do it. Amen. Just for a little bit, I want to hone in on that one phrase in the middle of verse 9 where the, the Lord speaking through David says, in a reminder that he... he searcheth all hearts, and he understandeth all imaginations of thought. And I want to preach for a little bit today simply about the battle for your imagination. The battle for your imagination. Now, the next few sentences I'm going to say are very important. It's important that I craft them correctly. It's important that you understand them correctly. Because if you don't, and you misquote me tomorrow at the water cooler when somebody asks you, how was church yesterday? What did your pastor preach about yesterday? If you don't say this correctly, this could really be a problem. Everybody say amen. I read an article about the magazine Playboy. Now, I did not say I read an article in the magazine Playboy. That's where we have to get this all straightened out right here and right now, okay? Because if you go to work tomorrow or to school tomorrow and you say, yeah, my pastor took an article out of Playboy that he read, then we are all going to have problems, okay? But this is a New York Times article that I read this week about the revamping of the pornographic magazine Playboy. It said that they're transitioning from nudity to negligee. No longer are they going to have nude models in their magazine. They have been in existence since the 50s. They have crafted and influenced our culture here, not only in America, but all over the world. Hugh Hefner is a blatant libertarian, and he has brought these incredibly liberal concepts and affected the way really that, that the core of America thinks and lives and kind of redefined what was okay as he busted out in the 50s with this pornographic publication. But they're going to transition and they're not any longer going to have nude models, but they will have models in provocative poses wearing skimpy outfits. Magazine officials said, and don't research this. You're going to have to trust me on this, all right? Magazine officials said it's being done in order to uh, uh, allow uh, social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to be used for their, for their platform in the, in the sources of web traffic. And... In publishing and advertising terms, Playboy is changing direction, it says, so it can capture the millennial. That's the people from age 18 to 30. Millennials are highly prized by advertisers and thus also by publishers. For all these years, they say, we left nothing to the imagination. But now we want your imagination back. What a statement. What a statement. They have already stolen our reality. They have already taken the purity from a nation and totally trashed it, watered it up, and now throwing it back in our face and saying, not only have we ruined your reality, but we want your imagination as well. Hell has declared war on the imaginations of this generation. 
It's a battle that certainly started a long time ago. Think about what an imagination is. It's the ability to form new images and sensations in the mind that are not perceived through senses like sight and hearing and so forth. It's the ability to form new images in the mind. Way back in the Garden of Eden, Satan tapped into the imagination of Eve when he he planted a seed in her mind about, I wonder what it would be like if you partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He twisted God's word, manipulated it, rearranged it, put doubt in her mind, confused her. But what he did most of all was start the wheels of her imagination in motion. What would it be like? If I were a God in my own sight. That's what the whisper of Satan said would happen. And her imagination got the best of her and her husband. And it caused an incredible the fall of humanity. And it has been an all out onslaught on the imagination of humanity ever since. In Genesis 6 and 5 at the flood, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Just a a speck of time into the on the landscape of eternity. Just a speck of time after the creation. Man's imaginations of thoughts now are evil continually and the Lord could not deal with that he couldn't operate in that arena any longer and so he brought destruction and started all over again with Noah and his family but if you go a couple chapters later the Lord said I, I, I'm not going to destroy man like that again uh, in other words in essence he was saying I'm not going to destroy them for their imaginations he mentions that word in that scripture in chapter 8 again but he, uh, he says, I, I, in essence, I'm going to save them through the arena of their imaginations. And so heaven and hell are at war over the imaginations of men and women. Satan penned a theme song to intensify the battle for our imaginations. He brought it into our modern times. He used the voice of John Lennon. First phrase, imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below, above us only sky. Imagine all the people living for today. It's hell's theme song in the battle of imagination. Imagine there's no countries. It isn't hard to do. Nothing to kill or die for and no religion to. Imagine all the people living life in peace. John says if we can strip away, John Lennon says if we can strip away the realities if we can strip away all that then we'll be able to find uh, uh, peace and we'll be able to find people living in joy for today. Take away heaven, take away hell, take away reality. Oh imagine what it would be like if we were to do that. He said you may say I'm a dreamer but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll all join us and the world will be as one. Well I'll tell you it's not one yet but there is an incredible army gathering under this guy's of destroying the imagination of humanity and it's done by ripping away reality by taking away the definites by erasing things lines and boundaries that are black and white and making it all gray and leaving it all up to our relative imagination and allowing us to form our own judgments and our own opinions and live our lives according to that out of control imagination that is being pulled along by the evil of Satan himself. Uh, Imagine no possessions, he said, if, if you can. No need for greed or hunger. A brotherhood of man. Imagine uh, all the world sharing. Uh, uh, John, you are you are not a dreamer. Uh, uh, you are an incredibly uh, 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 per, a person that is incredibly influenced by the evil of your generation. You're somebody that's being drawn away by your own evil imagination. As the boundaries of right and wrong, and as the the lines of black and white of God's uh, commandments and principles for humanity to live 
live by were erased. The imagination was set free. And he said in the very first line, imagine there's no heaven or hell below. What if we get rid of a whole concept that there's a God, that there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun? Imagine what life would be like that. Imagine how you could live with no boundaries like that, no limitations and no 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 fear of hell or, or, or no admiration of going to heaven. Imagine what that would be like. And so it has been a battle over the imagination, your imagination, my imagination now for hundreds and thousands of years since that day in the garden when the devil entered the arena of human imagination and he tricked Adam and Eve and he has been absolutely uh, successful throughout the ages of doing that. And David did something here in his last days. He made, he made some very pointed statements. He did some vision casting. He reset some boundaries. He, he talked about what would be if we if if uh, Israel would do what God required them to do and he said Solomon I want you to understand something I want you to have a, a complete a perfect heart totally focused on the Lord and I want you to have a willing mind don't make God have to talk you into everything I want you to be willing to serve him Here's why. Because the Lord searches, searches the hearts and he understands the imaginations of thoughts. And if you'll seek him, you'll find him. But if you forsake him, he's going to cast you off forevermore. David understands some, understood something. I have reigned for 40 years. I have accumulated all the wealth that it's going to take to build a temple. I have accumulated all the raw materials that it would take to successfully build build this temple to honor the Lord. Everything's in place. Uh, enemies have been defeated. Israel is liberated now. Everything, the climate is perfect. Uh, there's nothing your enemy can do and there's nothing you are in need of. But I'm telling you, son Solomon, that you are going to enter into a different kind of a battle. It's not the ones that I have fought and won for you. It's going to be one that is in your mind and that is in your heart. And we watch the rest of Solomon's life. Uh, he had all the wisdom, more than anybody had ever uh, uh, had. He was the wisest man of all time. He had all of, uh, uh, of the material things. He had all the wealth. He had all the, the influence politically and globally that anybody had ever experienced at that time. But you and I know how his story ends. We know that, that his own imagination got the best of him. It led him down some paths that, that veered off of God's plan. And he stopped seeking God God, and God did forsake him just like David had warned him of. There's nothing that can hold you back. Not a devil in hell that can stop you, Solomon. Not an enemy around us that can defeat us. We don't want anything. We're not begging for anything. We're not asking. We've got it all. I have accumulated and accomplished it all for you. But there is a battlefield that you're about to engage in. And it's in your mind and it's in your heart. It's the battlefield of your imagination. There is going to be be an enemy that's going to come in uh, and he's going to sneak in and it's going to be subtle and it's going to be uh, uh, you know just quiet and uh, unassuming but but it's going to be real and it's going to be a, a a greater foe than I ever faced. It's going to be worse than any giant I ever defeated or, or anything I've ever done before. It's going to be the enemy of your imagination. The emissary of darkness that's going to seep into your spirit and into your mind and attack you. But if you'll keep on focusing on God, you're going to be alright. You're going to find your strength in the Lord. But if you do not, the Lord does not tolerate that and He's going to cut you off and you're going to have to do this thing all by yourself. The building blocks for success are in place, but the battle is going to be fought in the battlefield of your imaginations. Is it not the exact same for you and I in our lives? We know we understand that the Lord has already won the battle. We understand that He conquered it all at Calvary and He purchased every single promise paid in full for you and me. Peace, healing, salvation, deliverance. Anything that we have need of, it is in the warehouse that God has filled up with His glory and His greatness. We're not begging for anything. We are children of 
God. Amen. We have at our disposal through faith in his name all the components to have a successful overcoming life. Amen. Not a devil in hell that can stop us. He's already been defeated. We're not afraid of dying because if we die, we're going to heaven. So there's not anything, not one thing that Satan could throw at us physically that could stop what God has intended to be for our lives, for our church in this generation. If you believe that, say amen. But we understand that there is a battlefield where we do suffer uh, some setbacks and it's in the battlefield of our imagination. It's what happens in the heart and what, what is imagined in the mind. That's where Satan begins to do to us what he did to Eve and do to us what he did to Solomon and, and do to us what he's done to millions and millions before us and, and Bible story after Bible character that suffered through this battle of for their imagination. Uh, we know that uh, uh, there's no disease that can stop us, no devil that can stop us, no problem that can get us down because the Lord's already conquered it all. It's not, there's nothing coming into my life, the scripture says, that is not common to man. It's, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I've got not got some weird abstract extraordinary circumstance that God is confused about amen he knows how to do it all nothing's impossible with him with him nothing shall be impossible I believe that today don't you but there's a battlefield in my imagination there's a fight over my thoughts there's a fight over my faith a fight over my hope and that's where that's where the battle is fought Amen, because I know I've got a warehouse of the goodness of God that I can just reach back into. But my mind and my spirit sometimes will get off track and get low on faith and lose sight of hope and be have a deficit of vision. And, and in that arena of the imagination, Satan attacks and he tells us that we're not going to prosper. We're not going to make it. We're not going to succeed. That's where he can get us. He knows he's already lost the battle, but he's trying to win a war individually with each and every one of us. In this place, there are some suffering with in, 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 a, in the arena of imagination. You cannot imagine you turning your life around and living for the Lord. You cannot imagine what it would be like if you were uh, to to be able to successfully live for God, say no to your sin, walk away from your lifestyle and embrace God's plan for your life. You, you cannot imagine that. In this house today are people that just can't imagine how they could possibly uh, save their marriage. They can't imagine how their kids could possibly be saved in this culture and environment. They, there are those that don't believe it's possible. They can't imagine growing a oneness apostolic church in a culture like the one that you all, you and I are living in today. Brother House, we can't imagine it sometimes when we get low on faith, Brother Matt, when our vision is dim and, and when we're full of fear, Brother Cody, it comes to this place where in the arena, we know God's good, we know Jesus conquered it all at Calvary, but, but and that's good, but, but sometimes we get disconnected from that and we end up isolated on a battlefield in, in of imagination and the devil begins to work on us and he begins to mess with us and, and, and we don't think there's hope and we don't think there's possibility and we don't think there's a future for us. We stand here and we say, man, God can save you from drugs and he can save you from alcohol. He can put your marriage back together. He can save your kids. He can get you out of this financial disaster you're in. He can turn your life around. We, we, we say that and, and, and then others when, that's great preacher that sounds great but everything's good in your life that's great friend saint buddy that's great it's good in your life but, but I'm the one right here fighting this battle in my imagination isn't it funny how all the logic and reasoning and, and, and truth that we can spew onto people's life doesn't make a dent does it sometimes you, I, I, you, I, I can counsel somebody and they can they can I can tell them all the promises of God I can tell them the devil's a liar I can tell them there's victory for their lives and I just see that blank stare in their eyes because they believe all that's true and there's a warehouse over there full of that stuff but they don't believe it can come into their lives why because in the battlefield of imagination they just can't imagine 
this thing getting any better. They're so beaten down, Sister Turnbo. They're so worn out. They're so tired of the fight. They have been beaten so many times, defeated so many times. They can't possibly think that there is a, a way that they can have victory in their lives. Amen. You look through that Bible, and we could find dozens and dozens of examples today. But just, just think simply, the most simplistic. Think about the, 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 the man at the pool of Bethesda in the New Testament in John chapter 5, where, where the Lord asked him a simple question. Do you want to be made whole? He didn't even answer it. He just started saying why he couldn't be made whole, right? He just started simply saying, well, I don't have a man to help me get into the water. People are always getting in front of me when the, when the water's trouble and the miracle season comes. And, and no, I, I didn't ask that, Jesus. I, I didn't ask that, I, if I could hear the Lord today say that. I asked, do you want to be made whole? <coughs> he may have at one point, but now he can't imagine how he's going to get down there. He cannot imagine when that angel comes and troubles that water at a season that I'm going to be able to get down there. I can't even imagine myself being healed. It's the battle for our imagination. And in this house this morning, I've come to bring, hopefully, a bit of encouragement to somebody. I've hope, I hope that not my words, but through His Spirit today and the anointing that I feel in this house that destroys a yoke of bondage, that kind of His anointing, it will, it will take that fog out of the eyes and it will lift that scale off the heart and the calluses off the feelings today. And the Lord in this precious moment in time, here in the midst of the battle of for, for your imagination, he will be able to come in to you and he will be able to talk to you to encourage you to let you know that you are going to be all right you see the executives at the magazine said we've already got the reality now we want their imagination Satan said I know I can't defeat him but I can defeat you in the battlefield of your imagination Eve imagine what it would be like and so she fell into a place where we no longer even have the ability sometimes to imagine I can't imagine what it would be like if my dad was filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized in Jesus name I can't imagine some of us can't imagine what it would be like if our wayward children were to come back to the Lord some of us can't imagine today how we can get out of the lifestyle that we're in and into a place of strength and relationship with God we can't even imagine that anymore hear me well today that yes, Satan engaged the battle uh, in the arena of imagination. Yes, uh, he used John Lennon to give us a theme song uh, for that fight. What if there was no heaven or hell below? Uh, and yes, he has not stopped and he understands his limitations, but he also understands the power that we allow him to have in our minds. Uh, we give him an all-access pass to get to us sometimes, and so he fights that fight. But I've got good news for every one of us in in this house this morning for though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds casting down what? imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself, itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I love that passage, don't you? If you struggle with hope today, if you struggle to find fresh vision today, if you struggle imagining yourself living for God today, I want you to know something. The Lord said, I didn't only physically go to Calvary and bleed real blood and die a real death. I also stepped into an arena that is not tangible by the touch. It's, a, it's the spiritual ground of battle. It's the imagination battlefield 
world uh, that I also am able to come into. You see, uh, the world is so good they understand. Uh, we're not fighting the battle uh, at the convenience store with the paper magazine anymore. It's a virtual battle. It's a cyber battle. Uh, and so they understand uh, that I can't just do it physically anymore. I've got to get deep into them. I've got to go into their virtual world and into their cyber world. Uh, well, bring it is all I can say. Uh, come on, devil. That's fine if you want to do that because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. I'm not going to pick up a bat and beat you over the head. I'm not picking up a shotgun and shooting you today. I'm going to take dominion over you through faith in prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you want to fight over my thoughts and fight over my faith and fight over my vision, that's all right because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God hallelujah the Lord is here to help us he's here to encourage us he's here to fight that battle for us somebody say amen oh hallelujah oh he shed real blood yes Real spikes on a real wooden Roman cross, yes. On a real location, a hill called Golgotha. And he spent uh, uh, the time there definitely in a real tomb. Uh, but he rose again on that third day. He ascended into glory. And now it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now he's very comfortable fighting in the arena of the unseen. Uh, you want to ra- wage a virtual battle, devil? You want to ra- uh, wage an imagination battle? That's fine. Because the Lord, uh, he is mighty and powerful. And he's already won that victory as well. Amen. I'm telling you, my thoughts do not get to dominate. He has the ability to bring them into captivity. Somebody say amen. See, some people, the phrase all through the Bible, the imagination of the hearts, Brother Austin, is there. The imagination and thoughts of the hearts. What lie has has the devil told us? What, What have we been led to believe? That we're just wired the way we are, right? We, we, that's just who we are, right? And, and, and so uh, if uh, I was born an alcoholic, that's, that was already in my heart. I was born a homosexual, that's already in my heart. I'm just wired that way. God made me that way. No, the Bible describes it as the imaginations of the thoughts of the heart. In other words, the, the, the things that you want to say you're pre-wired with, yes, we are fallen flesh. We are fallen humanity that are full of evil and we cannot save ourselves. I am 100% in agreement with that understanding. But I am not in agreement with the fact that the issues of the heart have already been settled and I can't interact with them, I can't influence them, I can't change them. That is not true. Somebody say amen. I know that circumstances influence I influence us. I know that background influences I influences us. I know all those things. But I do know this, that my heart has an imagination and it has thoughts and it makes choices and it makes decisions. Somebody say amen. And because of that, and because the Lord makes me with a free will, and I, I'm not robotic, and I do get to make choices, and I'm not pre-wired without an opinion or thoughts of the imagination of the heart. I do get to make those choices, and I am imperfect, and I am fallen flesh. The devil senses that. He's like a, it's like blood in the water, and he comes after me in that arena because he knows that's where he can get me. Somebody say amen. But glory be to God this morning. What did he say? He said, I'm going to take out that heart of stone and I'm going to put in them a heart of flesh. I'm going to take out, when I save you, I'm going to take out all those nasty, negative, harsh, evil things and I'm going to put into you a brand new heart, one that is sensitive to me, one that your thoughts and imaginations can be let loose in faith and hope and vision and, and the things of God. No longer will your imagination run wild and evil but now you're going to be able to have an imagination that will be limitless in the glory and the righteousness of God and you can imagine things that you could have never imagined before and you can accomplish things you never could have accomplished before how did that happen? it happened when I gave that old heart to him at an altar and he put a new one in me when he filled me with his hope with his spirit 
And it happened not just for me or for a few dozen in this place, but it's for whosoever will. If you'll call on the name of the Lord, he will do that for you today. Somebody say yes. Be seated for just a moment. We're about to finish. David said, deliver me not over into the will. This is Psalm 27. Deliver me not over into the will of mine enemies. For false witnesses are risen up against me and such as breathe out cruelty. And he says this. He said, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the Lord. He said, because of the attack and the onslaught of my enemies, I would have failed. I would have quit if I hadn't believed to see the goodness of God in the land of the Lord. Not see to believe. That's how we're wired as flesh, right? As humanity. We got to see it to believe it. But, but to David, he said, I almost quit and gave up, but something happened to me. And I believed to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. David understood a whole lot about the battle over your imagination. He was discounted so many times. Nobody thought he had any business being a king. But in his heart, as he spoke to Saul, he said, Wow, God delivered me out of the paw of a lion and the paw of a bear. And I can see me doing the same thing with this uncircumcised Philistine here. I don't know, call me crazy, but something's working inside me, Brother Leon. The imagination's just stirring inside of me. I don't know. I know you don't think I'm qualified, but there's something in, going on in faith inside of me in the, in the thoughts and the imagination of my heart. And I, I think I can take these five smooth stones in this shepherd's pouch and this sling I got, and I think I can go down into that valley and I can whip him. Say my imagination's running wild, but that's okay. I don't come at you with swords and with staves and with spears. I come at you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Well, he did imagine that, and it did happen, didn't it? David, David, it wasn't always victories on a battlefield for David. It was discouraging moments in caves, exiled and pursued by an enemy. And he's hiding out for his life in Ziklag. And he's about to talk himself out of his future in God. But the Bible says... That he encouraged himself in the Lord. I don't know how it went that day. I can imagine. You've been in a cave of discouragement, haven't you? Man, it seems like everything's going wrong. My marriage is on the rocks. My bank account's empty. My kids, our relationship is not what it could be. My relationship with God is so strained because of all these circumstances. David had an enemy coming after him too, but at Ziklag, he encouraged himself in the Lord. I think somehow he got his imagination back to moving in a a direction of faith. And he said, it seems like it's over and I'm down and out, but I don't know. Maybe there's a little hope here. Maybe there's a little hope here. And uh, David tapped into a fresh anointing in his imagination. Imagination is the ability to form images and sensation in the mind that are not perceived through senses such as sight. I can't see how this is going to work out. But a healthy, godly imagination says, I can see and feel something that makes no sense. I can see a a promise. Close your eyes. I can see me reaching out and grabbing that promise. Bring it into my life. I don't know how. If I open my eyes, my goodness, all I see is trouble. 
All I see are reasons why I can't succeed. But if I close my eyes and I get my spirit aligned with him and God moves on me a little bit, my imagination starts running wild. And I think it's possible. I think it's possible that the Lord can put my life back together again. The world, they've already ruined your reality and now they're coming after your imagination. They don't want you to have any hope in God, any faith in God. They want to rip all that away. They even wrote a theme song, What If There's No Heaven and No Hell? Why don't we strip away the realities and let the evil of our world just dominate you? But thank God Jesus Christ stepped on the scene and Paul reminded us afresh, I'm not fighting a financial battle. I'm not fighting a relationship battle. I'm not fighting an addiction battle. The weapons of my warfare are not carnal. They're not physical. I'm not going to fight the fight in the world. I'm going to fight the fight in my heart. I'm going to let the God who has already won the virtual battle come into my life. I'm going to let the God who I have never seen anyway come and touch my imagination today. And I pray this morning that fresh faith falls in this house. I pray that fresh hope comes into somebody's spirit today. Would you stand with me all over this congregation this morning? I feel the encouragement of the Lord in this house. Wish I could get a little help around here today. Does anybody else feel the Lord? Thank God, thank God, thank God that another musician stepped on the scene about 15 years ago. My man Bart Mallard, lead singer of Mercy Me, wrote a theme song, an anthem for the church to put on our playlist as we march out into the battlefield over our imagination. He said, I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. Hallelujah. Surrounded by your glory. What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or will I and all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Will I, to my knees, will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine, but I can't imagine today. I can imagine what heaven's going to be like, and I can also imagine what victory in this life is going to be like. Oh, I wonder if there's anybody in this place today that would like to get your imagination back on track. Anybody in this house today would like to get your hope back, your faith back. Oh, the devil, you've been so beaten down, so abused. He ruined your reality, and now he wants to take your imagination away from you as well. He don't want you to have any hope. He don't want you to have any faith. He don't want you to think God's able. But I've come to this house to sing a new song this morning. I've come to this place today to sing a new anthem of praise, of faith, and of hope in this house today. You've tried to take my imagination, but devil, you can't have it because the Lord is in this place to encourage me. Would you like to come? Would you like to come and connect with God today and say, Lord, touch my heart, touch the thoughts of my imagination, re-encourage me, reignite me, reinvigorate me this morning, Lord. Millennials, they want you. They're trying to destroy you. They're coming after you. Oh, but I'm here to tell you, there is a weapon in your arsenal. There is a God today who's already won the virtual battle. He's already won the invisible battle. Will I stand in your presence? Hallelujah. To my knees will I Jesus. go, will I see, we need fresh hallelujah, faith. renewed hope, I'll be able to speak it all, God, we've got to have it, imagine. Jesus, touch my imagination, let me see it again, 
Let me feel it again. Let me think about it again, Lord. Hallelujah. Surrounded by your glory. Jesus. Maybe I can overcome this. Maybe I can find my healing. Maybe. I don't know. Devil's already lied to me and told me I was an outcast and a reject. But I don't know. Something's stirring in the Holy Ghost today. He's touching my imagination again today. Maybe I can do something for the Lord. Maybe I can win this battle. Oh, I can only. Oh, hallelujah. He's come to cast down those evil imaginations. And he's come to bring you a fresh one. And give you the choice, Solomon. Follow after the Lord. You'll be all right. It's going to be all right. Oh, you're not alone in this thing. Glory. What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. Ah, yes. I don't know. I'm just crazy enough to believe. Oh, yeah. I believe I can go down in that valley and I can, I can whip that giant. Imagine. I'm just I'm just crazy enough to believe it today. Something's working in my imagination. I believe God can restore me. I believe God can heal me. Oh, will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? I believe God can use me again. Oh, I don't care what the battle's been like. I don't care what the circumstances may have been. I believe God's going to work through me again. Find somebody to pray with. Would you encourage somebody in the Lord today? Let's bind together. The devil may have ruined their reality. Now he's trying to get their faith. He's trying to take their hope. He's trying to dim their vision. Take their imagination away from them. But the Lord's here today to do a fresh word. I come against you, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak fresh Surrounded faith, by your glory. fresh anointing, what fresh favor over these wonderful feel? folks today. Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak? All I can only imagine. Oh, I can only imagine. Two verses. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still when I stand in your presence or to my knees will I fall will I sing hallelujah will I be able to speak at all I can only imagine oh I can only imagine Only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. Can only imagine. Oh, yeah. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or 
To my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah, will I be able to speak it all, I can only imagine, I can only imagine. can only imagine oh, I can only imagine singing that line lift your hands receive that I can only, only imagine, imagine. Well, I can only imagine oh, what God's about to do in your life I can, oh, only, I can only imagine, imagine what God is about to unleash the blessing the victory oh, yeah. Oh, I can imagine things are about to turn around for you. Imagine. Oh, I can imagine the devil's on the run right now. Oh, I can I imagine can he's going to have to let go of some things that he thought you were just going to allow him to take, but he's running out of your house right now. Oh, I can he's dropped it all. Imagine. Because fresh revelation is in this place that says, Oh, I my can God can do a imagine. work. I'm going to believe it again. I'm going to trust it again. Jesus. I can only imagine. Hallelujah. Mm. Holy, holy, holy. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory. Will you sing that chorus one more time? Jesus. Surrounded by your glory. What will my heart feel? Will I? Or in all of you be still Will I stand in your presence Or to my knees will I fall Will I sing hallelujah Will I be able to speak at all I can only imagine Oh yes I can only imagine Hands and pray. Will I dance oh, for you, Jesus? Oh, or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all I can only I can only imagine. Every time I hear that song, what will I do when I stand before God? When I stand in his presence, what will we do? You can only imagine because you don't know what you're going to do. It will be so powerful. <clears throat> what a powerful message, Pastor. What a powerful message to bring it all back into us, just to imagine the things of God and not the things of the world. When the devil tries to get us down, and of, of everything that he tries, that we're sick, we, we're going through trials, we, we have no money. But if we just imagine what God has for us, imagine the money that God has for us. Not, not the money that's in our pocket, but the riches of his glory. The Holy Ghost that is in filling. Just imagine that. In closing, let's just pray over this church. Lord, we love you today. We thank you so much for all that you do for us, God. We thank you so much, Lord, of who you are. God, of, of everything that you do, God, and we thank you so much. We thank you for this powerful message. And God, we ask you, would you touch us? Lord, you bless us and help us this week. Lord, help us to go about our day. Lord, would you be with us and bring us back on Wednesday night. Lord, we thank you for all. In the mighty name of Jesus, you're dismissed.